Thanks for that warm welcome, Jenna. Like Jenna said, my name is Bailey Blesser. I'm going to be presenting today on behalf of Assurance's wellness team. Uh, we're going to be talking about office ergonomics, so I'm super excited and uh, feel privileged to have the opportunity to speak with you guys here today. So without further ado, we'll, uh, we'll jump into the presentation. So in today's technology age, most workers use a computer at some point during their work, work day. And oftentimes people use a computer at home as well, uh, especially with the working from home aspect of today's workforce. There's a lot of computer use and a lot of long taxing hours spent sitting at a computer. Um, today we're gonna talk about how to set up a healthy workstation and ways you can minimize your potential for musculoskeletal disorders while going about your business during your workday. So to go deeper into our agenda, we're gonna talk about today some of the main points being, what is ergonomics? How can we prevent musculoskeletal disorders? Uh, how can we set up our workstation properly to, present, or to prevent these disorders? And what kind of movements and stretches we can incorporate into our day to keep us from having any sort of issues down the line with uh, musculoskeletal disorders or just discomfort and pain in the workplace. So what is ergonomics? Uh, the word ergonomics is actually made up of two parts. So the first part being ergo, which actually means work, and nomics, which means rules or laws. So the word ergonomics literally means the laws of work, and it can be defined as the science of work and a person's natural relationship with the work that they're performing. Ergonomics is about fit, the fit between a person and what they do the objects they use, and the environment in which they work. If good fit is achieved, the stresses on people are reduced. They can become comfortable and can complete the task of their daily work more efficiently and productively without having discomfort or pain throughout their day. An ergonomic, calc or an ergonomic evaluator will look for specific risk factors that may indicate a poor fit, and then they recommend uh, they make recommendations to help reduce these risks. So why are ergonomics important? Uh, believe it or not, if you work a 40 hour week in a desk job setting, you're spending 25% of your, your entire week in that position sitting at the computer. And uh, in relation to that, one in three office workers suffer pain at least once a week. There's two basic categories of factors that we need to consider when we're setting up our workspace. These two factors influence how our bodies react to the work that we're performing on a daily basis. The first of these two factors is environmental conditions. An environmental condition is what we're being exposed to, or in other words, our physical surroundings. The second factor is physical stressors. These are the type of activity that you're performing during your workday and how it affects your body. Environmental factors are those that affect your senses. So for example, your sight, your hearing, your taste, your smell. Just as with any other aspect of life, excessive exposure to these factors can cause damage to your body. Example of these factors, examples of these factors include noisy areas or areas with constant high-pitched sounds, which can damage your hearing. Dim lighting or the wrong type of lighting can cause additional strain on your eyes, which over time can affect your, your ability to see. High temperatures or cold temperatures in the workplace can lead to heat-related illnesses. And hard seats or cramped spaces can affect your overall comfort and health and can actually lead to chronic pain over time. Physical stress, stressors can place additional stress on specific body parts, such as your joints, muscles, nerves, and more. And how we routinely perform our work will directly affect the stress put on these body parts. For example, if you work at a job and you're lifting something or lifting a heavier weight improperly, it can cause substantial strain on your back, which can cause pain due to pulled muscles or slipped discs. Repetitive movements can cause chronic damage to nerves and tendons, which can lead to joint pain. These repetitive injuries are called cumulative trauma disorders or repetitive strain injuries. 
Injuries caused by physical stressors are known as musculoskeletal disorders or MSDs. Musculoskeletal disorders, it's, it's a sort of discomfort that accumulates over time in the muscles. And uh, basically our bones and muscles make up our musculoskeletal system. So this system allows us to perform activities of everyday life, such as walking, swimming, uh, jogging, anything that you do day in and day out requires your musculoskeletal system. And uh, as strong as this system is, overuse of the muscles through repeated movements can put stress on your body, causing several types of injuries. These injuries are all categorized as musculoskeletal disorders. Uh, these are often accompanied by strains, sprains, inflammation, other discomforts in the joints are um, commonly used like parts of the bodies. They're caused by like numerous factors, including repetitive motions, forceful exertion, awkward posture, or just different environmental factors that we encounter during our daily work. They're often not caused by one single traumatic event either, but they're due to repetitive micro trauma to the tissue that happens over a great period of time. So it's not something that you're just gonna experience in one sitting, it's something that's cumulative and builds up over time. So some of the main risk factors of musculoskeletal disorders include repetition, awkward posture, and contact stress. Repetition is the prolonged use of a muscle or muscle group without intermittent rest. Uh, this can lead to fatigue and can eventually cause damage to that muscle or muscle group. Tendons connect muscles to the bones. With excessive use, they may become irrit irritated and cause something called tendonitis, which is basically just a pain in the joints. Another risk factor is awkward posture. Awkward posture is uh, Something that you'll notice when you do, you have like an awkward posture, your posture's off over a long period of time, and this can cause muscle tension, reduce blood flow, pinch nerves, and uh, it's important that we maintain a more neutral posture over time, which can help reduce all these risk factors and help us to be more comfortable in our workplace. Another risk factor is contact stress. Contact stress is pressure on the body uh, that's like experienced due to like being in contact with a hard edge or surface. So for example, like the edge of your desk. Uh, this can reduce circulation and obstruct nerve signals leading to swelling, tingling, or discomfort. Uh, like another way of putting this is people often refer to it as like their foot falling asleep or something like that. Sometimes I know if I sit at my computer and type for too long, I'll notice that in my fingers. It'll be like they're tingly and they're they're like falling asleep is how some people put it. So that's what we're talking about there. And uh, this is, like I was saying, this is common from like being in contact with the hard surface of your desk or uh, percent or perhaps like the front edge of uh, like your seat against your calf or something like that. So how can we prevent MSDs? Uh, there's a lot of precautions that can be taken to prevent these. Some of these include taking frequent micro breaks. Uh, another one is staying physically fit. Uh, another example of something we can do to prevent these is uh, varying posture and switching up tasks throughout the day. You can also assess work areas for potential hazards. And you can keep your work area organized, which keeps you from being like cramped in your space and confined. So now we're gonna talk about how we can set up our workstation to make it like a little more ideal for us to experience less discomfort and be at a lesser risk for something like uh, MSDs. So uh, if you work in an office setting, you've probably seen a lot of different like postures that people use while they're working all day. Uh, illustrated in this cartoon on this slide, we have examples of different postures that are common, uh, such as someone sitting right up against the screen like this one, somebody leaning way back, uh, somebody that's using like a hunchback. 
and then someone that's just like crunched up in this position. Uh, all of these different positions that we have pictured here are just common postural positions that are just improper. And uh, if you stay in that position over a long period of time, day in and day out, you're gonna experience uh, like discomfort and pain due to it. So with that being said, what is like the right position? Uh, we're gonna go over that here in the next couple slides. So there's really, when we're talking about the right position, there's four areas of focus. Uh, the first area is keeping your body to your chair. You want a chair that supports your back in an upright position with a slight arch, such as is pictured here. Notice how he's not like hunched over like some of those pictures showed on the last slide. And he's also not like super crunched up. Another area of focus is we want to keep our feet to the floor. You want to have your feet flat on the floor. And if this isn't possible, because maybe you're just shorter or something like that, where your feet just don't touch the floor. One thing you can do is use like a little step stool and put your feet on that. Just something to keep your feet flat and in contact with the floor to avoid pain. Our third area of focus is hands to the mouse and keyboard. You want to use an ergonomic keyboard and mouse. This is something that does not have you reaching in an awkward position. And our fourth area of focus is like your eyes to the screen or how your monitor is leveled in relation to your body. So you want to position your monitor at eye level about arm's length ahead of you. And we're just going to dive a little bit deeper into these four focus points in the next couple slides. Starting out with the body to chair point. So you want to position your chair before making other workstation adjustments. Your workstation seating affects your back, shoulders, hips, and upper legs. So first off, you want to move your chair away from your desk. You want to adjust the seat height so that you feel comfortable and your feet are flat on the floor. You then want to adjust the depth so that you have two to three finger like widths between the front edge of your chair and your calf. This is going to present prevent like that contact related discomfort. And next you're going to want to raise or lower the lumbar support to fit the curve of your back. You're either going to adjust the entire backrest or just the lumbar section within the backrest. You just want to make sure that it's comfortable and that you don't have strain on your back when you're sitting there all day. Next, you want to focus on your backrest tilt and tension. Adjust the backrest tilt to your comfort and adjust the tension that it takes to recline or remain more upright. You don't want to constantly be sitting there and like fighting your chair, wanting to lean back or anything like that. That's just going to cause additional strain to your back and abdominal region. Next, we want to adjust the armrest. They should be at the same height as your desk or keyboard so that you're not in an awkward like slump position. If you're sitting there working at your computer, you should be able to just like put your arms on your armrest and you're just going to be in line with it. Uh, the armrest should hold up the forearm in a 90 degree position without pushing your shoulders up. You don't want it to like compress your body. You want to be able to relax still and have your shoulders relaxed. You don't want them like pushing up or anything like that. And then you want your arms to be in a 90 degree position. So moving on to our next uh, focus point being feet to the floor. This considers how equipment at your workstation affects the position of your lower legs, ankles and feet. If your feet are not planted firmly on the floor, it is recommended that you use a footrest. Without ideal support for your feet, your body will adjust itself. And believe it or not, this will actually lead to like lower back discomfort. So it's really important that you have your feet flat on the floor and you're not like, like if you're a little bit shorter, you don't have them dangling down. And if you're, uh, you're taller, you want to adjust your chair upwards so that you're able to put them flat on the floor and don't have to like keep them uh, extended out or anything like that. Our next focus point is hands to mouse and keyboard. This focuses on how equipment in your workstation affects the posture, your hands, wrists, arms, and shoulders. So there's a lot of different types of keyboards on the market, including slope keyboards, keyboards that are shaped like a dish, uh, stepped and splits keyboards. 
all of which are good and kind of have like personal preferences attached with them. But the main thing you want to keep in mind is keyboards should be positioned at elbow height. So you're not reaching up or down to like type on them. And uh, you also want to have your wrist straight and in a neutral position when you're typing on your keyboard. Your keyboard should be flat or in a negative tilt to promote using like that straight wrist posture. You want to retract the feet of your keyboard. So what that means is you either want your keyboard to be sitting flat on your desk or in a negative tilt being so like if I take my keyboard here instead of having it tilted like this, you want it tilted forward. And that's just going to keep you from like compressing your wrists like this, which is going to lead to pain and like this area of your wrist over time. Moving on to when you're using your mouse, you want it to be located to the side of your keyboard and you want to keep it so that your wrist is in a straight line while you're using it. You're not like reaching way off to one side or the other. So as is pictured here, you want to keep your wrist straight just like this in these two uh, pictures. And you don't want to be like curving off to the side or anything like that, like is pictured here. Again, just like with using your keyboard, if you keep that straight alignment, you're going to avoid like wrist pain from being in those awkward positions. So uh, studies have shown an increase in pressures within the carpal canal when using keyboarding with anchored wrist. There should be no pressure on your wrist when you're using your keyboard keyboard. You don't want to like wear watch bands too tight, uh, wear hair ties or like rubber bands around your wrist. Anything that adds pressure you want to avoid. If you learn to type with anchored wrists, then use of something like a palm support may reduce your risk of like experiencing pain or discomfort. So a palm support is what we have like pictured here. It's also known as a wrist rest. So these are like basically they're basically like a little pillow that goes on the back of your keyboard or a lot of times like I know in our Chicago office we have them for mouses as well. It's like a little mouse pad that has a little like I call it like a little pillow on the back of it. And basically you can rest your wrist on that and it just makes it a lot more comfortable. Uh, like I said, we have them at our Schaumburg and Chicago offices and it's something that I'd never seen until I started working with Assurance and I started using it. And I honestly, like when I work from home, I miss it. I need to start bringing them back and forth because it is super comfortable and you don't notice that like that stress on your wrist from like sitting there all day and typing and stuff. So our last focus point is eyes to the screen. This considers the aspects of your workstation that affect your vision. Reviewing the, the position of your monitor and the ideal height for you can help like identify other risks that can lead to pain. So with that being said, the top inch, like inch or two of your monitor should be level with your eyes. This allows your eyes to have a 15 to 30 degree downward gaze, which keeps you from like putting strain on your neck by looking up. Monitors positioned in the middle of your forward gaze will cause significant eye strain over time as well. So the monitor should be centered within your body, not off to the sides. Uh, believe it or not, your head weighs about eight to 12 pounds. So if you have your monitors off to the side and you're constantly tilting your head forward, or tilting it to the side to look at them, you're putting a lot of strain on your neck muscles. And uh, this tends to compress the disc in your neck, which over a long period of time can lead to neck pain. Uh, this tension in the neck muscles from like holding your head up if you're looking to one side or looking down a lot can also lead to headaches. So uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. If you have a lot of headaches while you're at work, maybe try changing the position of your monitor. If you keep your head in a neutral position, the muscles don't have to work as hard, so you shouldn't experience that neck pain or perhaps the headaches that you have. Uh, some other tips include keeping frequently needed items within 10 inches of your body. Things such as pens or phones or if you're using a stapler or something like that a lot, just to keep you from having to make like awkward motions to constantly reach over and grab a pen mm -hmm. or your cell phone or something like that. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're on the phone frequently, you want to use a headset 
Uh, this is rather than having to do like the held head tilt method to hold your phone against your shoulder or uh, even just holding a phone there over long periods of time can lead to fatigue and it can also lead to like neck pain or pain in your ear from like holding the phone up against it and stuff. So that's something to consider if you do a lot of calls in your job, you want to try using a headset. Um, another thing we'll go over quick is typing. So believe it or not, studies show that most people hit the keys three to four times harder than is necessary. And it's actually recommended that you use a slight touch. Uh, this is going to reduce fatigue in your like fingers, your wrist, all those sorts of areas of your body. And uh, another thing is your colleagues that work around you are probably going to appreciate this a little more than hearing you smash your keyboard all day long. Uh, lastly, eye strain. So something that we talk about is the 2020 rule. This is to refocus your eyes for 20 seconds every 20 minutes. So if you've been sitting there staring at your monitor or responding to emails for like 20 minutes straight, take a second to just pick something in your room and like refocus your eyes on that for 20 seconds. And this is gonna prevent like eye strain or just discomfort from staring at a computer all day. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is most dry and itchy eyes are a result of uh, dust that comes off your computer monitors. So sometimes just wiping them down can uh, help reduce that discomfort as well. So uh, the last part of the presentation that we're gonna go into is moving and stretching. So sitting for long periods is related to heart disease risk and also may be an increased risk to risk of kidney disease and uh, syndromes such as obesity. Any extended sitting, such as sitting behind a desk at work, or perhaps sitting for long periods of time behind the wheel of a vehicle can lead can be harmful and lead to these risks. So contrary to belief, like spending a few hours a week at the gym or like engaging in moderate to vigorous physical activity really doesn't offset this risk if you're still living a super sedentary lifestyle uh, besides like the little bit of time that you're spending a week at the gym. So a solution for this seems to be simply put just less sitting and more overall moving. So uh, you might want to start by simply standing rather than sitting whenever you have a chance or uh, like think about different ways that you can incorporate like a little brief period of walking in your day at work. Uh, sitting at a desk all day, even with the best posture, can still be stressful on your body. Your body can only tolerate like being in one position for about 20 minutes, which if you think about it really isn't long at all. So you want to like make slight readjustments throughout your day. This is why it's super important to take a break, whether it's just walking to get a glass of water or uh, maybe going to like switch up the activity you're doing. Like if you've been responding to emails, going to the copier, or sending a fax or something like that, something that just moves you around a little bit. So we'll talk about standing a little bit. Uh, with just a one hour increase in your daily non-sitting time, believe it or not, you'll actually feel more energized. You'll feel more comfortable. You'll feel more focused, more productive, and just overall, you have a better like feeling about your day. So like, how can we make sure we stand more while we're at work? Uh, one example of standing of a way that you could like incorporate standing in your day is uh, when the phone rings, answer it standing up and then stand throughout the duration of the call. Uh, this is something that if you work a job where you get a lot of phone calls, maybe it might, might not be the most ideal thing ever because you're just going to be standing all day. But if it's something where you work a job where you're only on the phone a few times a day, this is perfect to get you standing more. Another thing you can do is stand during meetings or perhaps stand during your lunch or a coffee break. Uh, you could also set a reminder to stand every half hour or so. For those of you that I know from like personal experience, I've wore an Apple Watch for a little while now, and it'll like send you reminders every hour or so to take like a standing break or just to stand up. Something like that is great to use as well to have that reminder. And uh, one of my favorites is standing whenever you run into something frustrating 
in your day or something challenging, uh, if you just take a second to like stand up and think about it, sometimes it can clear your head. Plus it gives you that, uh, that extra benefit of standing. So uh, our final slide here today, we're gonna talk about stretching. So work creates stress on certain muscle groups within the body. Muscles stress more than usual during the workout will begin to tighten once you stop like working. Uh, stretching helps us to avoid stiffness and soreness in our muscle groups. Stretching can also have the benefit of improving flexibility and circulation throughout our body. Pictured here, we have some simple stretches that can be completed in the comfort of your workstation. It's not anything elaborate that you're really gonna have to go out of your way to do. It's just a simple thing. You can take a break while working and stretch out like common areas of your body that'll experience pain. Uh, the first of these is the side of the neck stretch, which is pictured here. It's just as simple as like stretching your neck to the side. That's gonna help relieve some of that neck pain that you experience from like sitting there looking at monitors and whatnot. Another good one is a shoulder shrug. We have that pictured here. You're simply just gonna put your arms at your side and lift your shoulders up. That's gonna help relieve some of that tension in the shoulder and neck area. We also have the overhead shoulder stretches, which are pictured here. That's another like neck and shoulder exercise, upper back exercise that's gonna kind of stretch those areas out. So as you can see here, you just wanna hold your hands above your head and lift up. And then another super popular one is the side deltoid stretch. This is just like your arm over your chest stretch that was used by, it seems like every high school sports team and stuff. So you're just gonna put your arm over your chest like this and pull it, or yeah, you're just gonna put it over your chest and pull it in towards your chest. And that's gonna stretch like all those areas, your upper back and your shoulder. Some other beneficial movements include shaking your hands every so often, just to kind of like alleviate some of that tension that you'll have from using a mouse or a keyboard. And uh, another thing that uh, you can do is kind of just like, like it goes hand in hand with standing. If you want to just stand up and take like little walking circles or something like that, just something to kind of get the blood flowing in the lower extremities of your body if you've been sitting for a long period of time. And uh, that concludes our office ergonomics presentation for today. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. It was a pleasure to present.